There he is, Dr. McCarthy. Nice to see you. Hi, Ann. Hi, thanks for doing this. It's been 20 years since you joined Northwestern Medicine. Has the time flown? Time is absolutely flying. As they say, time flies when you're having fun, and we've been having a lot of fun for 20 years. It's great to hear. All right, well, we're gonna tag along. Go ahead and lead the way. Sounds great, we'll get started. Hey, Glenn. Uh, how, how are you? you? How you Good doing? to see you. Good to see you, sir. How Speaking you? of 20 years, yes, uh, indeed. you were the first person I met when I walked in here at oh, like yeah. six in the morning, and I, you were here that day. I remember, I was checking IDs at that time. You were. Yes, and you're like, who is this? this new guy who seems lost. And, 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 and uh, I was a pleasure to help you. I'm so sure. glad to see you ever since then. Thank you. Thanks sir. for everything that you do. Thank you. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Okay, Dr. All right. Okay. Thanks, Len. All right, Dr. McCarthy. So who and what brought you to Northwestern Medicine? Well, the what is pretty easy because it was a great opportunity and I came home to Chicago. And so that really helped. The who, there were a whole lot of people. So one would be Dean Harrison. He was the CEO at the time. The other would be Bob Bono. He was the chief of cardiology. And I think one of the final who's would be my daughter Elizabeth because I lived in Cleveland at the time and she came home from Christmas break and she says, not that it'll influence you, but I'm never moving back to Cleveland, but I like Chicago and I'll move there. And sure enough, she was good to her word. Do you remember the first surgery you performed here at Northwestern Memorial Hospital? Uh, the first surgery, of course, was a mitral valve repair. Your father was also a surgeon. How did that inspire you to pursue a career in medicine? So I grew up in medicine. My dad was a surgeon, and so I talked to him a lot about what it was like to be a surgeon. Uh, I went and watched him operate when I was a teenager, when you could do that. And uh, so it had a big influence. A year after you joined Northwestern Medicine, you helped establish the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute downtown. How many Bloom Cardiovascular Institute locations are there now? So we have four heart surgery programs, 11 hospitals, and we're in 18 locations now. In less than 10 years, Bloom Cardiovascular Institute became a top 10 program in the nation for cardiology and heart surgery. What was it like to hear that news? Amazing. So uh, we have been totally unranked, and then we're top 10 uh, within 10 years. Nobody had ever heard of that. All right, we'll follow you upstairs. Okay. Just this past year, Bloom Cardiovascular Institute achieved 32% cardiac surgery growth. Why is that so significant? Um, also amazing. So if you look at it, in the last 20 years in the U.S., cardiac surgery has grown 1%, and we've grown something like 870%. And so last year was another huge year, a 32% growth. This year so far, we're up 28%. So we just keep on growing. There's huge demand for the services. Got a great team. Speaking of impressive stats, you were the second cardiac surgeon in the world to perform the Cox Maze procedure and the first in the world to combine that with mitral valve repair. Do you remember how it felt when you accomplished these milestones? Uh, I do. So fortunately, Jim Cox was with me when I did the first uh, maze procedure on my own. But it's a little like being the second person after Lindbergh to fly across the Atlantic. So not a lot of people paid attention to it. But the mitral valve repair with the maze procedure in those days, that was a very complicated operation. So we all remember that really well. The patient was only 45 and he was so grateful. What is your greatest achievement in cardiac surgery? So I think what I will probably be remembered for someday is um, what we've done with mitral valve repair and with the maze procedure now. So um, we just published the mitral valve repair results that are the best ever published at 10 years. So like 0.2% risk of death at 30 days, almost like an appendectomy. And then at 10 years, uh, almost 99% of patients without a failure. So those are, those are incredible. I think people will remember that. So you're obviously inspiring a lot of people, but who inspires you professionally? I gotta think about that one again for a second. So 
I don't know that there would be a person necessarily that inspired me, but the environment that I grew up with at the Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, and Stanford were all the first generation pioneers of cardiac surgery. And I can remember conversations like, you should aspire to be the best in the world. Not just really good at this, but one of the best ever. Now let's get to some fun facts, Dr. Oh, McCarthy. Good. The fun stuff. Good. What's your guilty pleasure? Um, believe it or not, sometimes I waste time. Like I'll watch TV shows, I like Chicago PD, I read stupid articles, that kind of a thing. First concert you ever saw? Jethro Tull. <clears throat> and how about your favorite band today? And is that who you listen to oh. in the OR? Yeah, so I have a lot of favorite bands these days. So something happened in the pandemic. There was a huge shift in the world. And I started listening to country music. So right now, Keith Urban and the two Lukes, Luke Bryan, Luke Combs, all sorts of people. Okay, well, I have some calls to make and a couple of things to do before I go down to the operating room to do a mitral valve repair. I'll catch up with you in a bit. All set. All right. Any day of surgery routines that you follow? Uh, coffee. So coffee first thing in the morning at like 5 a.m. and another one before I get to the operating room. So I don't really have any big routines anymore that I have to go through. Let's talk numbers. Do you know how many mitral valve repairs you've performed? So I've done about 11,000 heart operations and about 4,000 of them are mitral valve repairs. Most surgeons do about five a year. So I've done almost a thousand years worth. So that's a lot. This year, Northwestern Memorial Hospital was recognized as a top 20 hospital in the world for cardiac surgery. What was your reaction to this news? Big smiles when I heard about that. So, um, you know, it really is a testament to the team that we've grown and the great results that they get and all the recruiting that we've done. So why cardiac surgery for your specialty? The thing I really like about cardiac surgery and and in particular with what I do with heart valve surgery is that for the most part, when I repair a mitral valve, patient's good, it's fixed, and it's gonna stay that way for the rest of their life. So I've restored the patient's life span to what's expected for a patient that age and sent them on their way. They're gonna be good. What are you most excited about regarding the future of heart care? So the future of heart care, I think in what I do in surgery is gonna get less and less invasive. We're coming up with all sorts of new gizmos to be able to replace me over time, uh, which is fine. And uh, the recovery is quicker as long as they still get really good results, as long as the quality is still intact. And so um, I think that looks great. I think artificial intelligence is gonna kind of slowly come in and help uh, augment what the physicians do so that it's really high quality results for the patients. If you couldn't have been a cardiac surgeon, what would you have been? A rock star. <laughs> Only I didn't have any talent. So, musically, I'm just hopeless. That would have been great. Well, good thing you're a rock star in the OR. Yeah, that's pretty good too. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. We know you have a surgery to get to. That's been 20 Questions with Dr. McCarthy. It was a real pleasure. Okay, guys, I'm back. <laughs>